All right, today we're going to take a look at two more voting methods. We're going to look at the board account and plurality with elimination. So first of all, board account method was named for Jean-Charles de Bord, who was a French mathematician in the 1700s. So for this method, each place on a ballot is assigned points. So it does take into account all of the voters' preferences from their first choice to their last choice. And the winner is the person or the candidate who has the most points. And the goal is that that person who gets the most points will be generally acceptable to most of the voters. So here's how you set up the board account. If you have N candidates, then a first place vote earns you N points, a second place vote earns you N minus one points, etc., and then a last place vote earns you one point. You total up the points for each candidate. The candidate with the most points is the winner or the Borda candidate. So let's take a look at an example. So we are using the same example that we looked at in the previous video with the Math Appreciation Society and their election for their club president. We have the same exact uh, preference schedule. So there are four candidates in this election, Alicia, Boris, Carmen, and Dave, or A, B, C, D, as we've abbreviated them. A first place vote will earn four points, second place will be three points, third place will be two points, and fourth place will be one point. So um, there are several ways that you can do the math to figure out how many points each candidate earns. Here is my suggestion. So I'm going to just look at, at Alicia. So 14 people voted Alicia as their first choice. So that means she gets four points for each of those 14 first place votes. Then uh, 10 people had her in last place. Eight people had her in last place. Four people had her in last place and one person had her in last place. So this is just my suggestion as to a method that will help you make sure that you are both efficient, but um, don't make extra mistakes by trying to make other shortcuts. So when we total this up, Alicia has earned 79 points. And then we do the same thing for the other candidates. So for Boris, these 14 people had him in second place. These 10 people had him in second place. These eight people had him in third place. These four people had him in first place. And this one person had him in third place. So when we total that up, Boris has 106 points. And then for Carmen, the 14 people had her in third place. The 10 people had her in first place. Eight people had her in second place. Four people had her in third place. And the one person had her in first place. Total that all up, and we have 104 points for Carmen. And lastly, Dave, 14 people had him in fourth place, 10 people had him in third place, eight people had him in first place, four people had him in second place, 
and the one person had him in second place as well. So that's a total of 81 points. So the person with the most points is Boris. So Boris is the Borda candidate. Now, there is a nice little way to make sure that you uh, didn't make any math mistakes. So we have four candidates. So if I add up 4, 3, 2, 1, that's 10 points. So my one preference ballot, I give out 10 points. Four points to the, my first choice, three points to my second choice, two points to my third choice, and one point to my fourth choice. Total, there are 37 voters. So if each voter gives out 10 points, that means that total, there should be 370 points given out. If you add up these four numbers, they do in fact add up to 370. So that's a way that you can double check your math. It is not guaranteed to catch all mistakes, but it will catch most of the mistakes that you make in your multiplication and addition. Now, what are the issues with the board account? Because I've told you multiple times that every issue or every method has some issues. So let's look here. Principal at Washington Elementary School just retired and a new one must be selected. The four finalists are Miss Amaro, Mr. Burr, Mr. Castro, and Miss Dunbar. Again, we're going to abbreviate them ABCD. After the interviews, the 11 school board members vote on the following preference schedule. We want to know who the Borda winner is. So we use the same method that we used in the previous example. So Miss Amaro has six people who voted her as their first choice, two people who made her, oops, their fourth choice, and three people who had her as their fourth choice. So that's 29 votes. Mr. Burr. has 32 points. Mr. Castro has 30 points. And Ms. Dunbar has 19 points. So, Mr. Burr is going to be our Borda candidate. Now, is there a majority candidate? Did someone receive a majority of the first place votes? Yes, Miss Amaro had six of 11 votes. Is there a Condorcet candidate? Well, we can figure that out by looking at all of the matchups. So Miss Amaro won all of her head-to-head matchups. 
So Miss Amaro is also our Condorcet candidate. So in this example, the board account violates two basic criteria of fairness, the majority criterion and the Condorcet criterion. We have a majority candidate and that candidate did not win by the board account. We also have a Condorcet candidate and that candidate did not win by the board account. Both of which are problematic. So in real life, the board account method is used for um, quite a few selection processes, actually. It's used for sports awards, college football polls, some music industry awards, and a lot of hiring for principals, university presidents, and corporate executives. So it is a fairly common um, voting method. Now let's look at plurality with elimination. This is also called instant runoff, which is what we discussed in class the other day. So we take our original preference schedule and we are going to eliminate candidates with the fewest first place votes until we get one candidate with a majority. So round one, if a candidate has a majority of the first place votes, then we're done. That person's the winner. Otherwise, we are going to eliminate the candidate or possibly candidates if there's a tie with the fewest first place votes. We cross out those uh, eliminated candidates and we recount the first place votes. And we continue this process until someone has a majority of the first place votes. So let's look at an example. I find it helpful to write out a lot of work for this method. So going back to the math club, total, we know we have 37 members of the club. If you don't remember that off the top of your head, you can add up these number of votes. So a majority is one more than 50%. So a majority is going to be 19 first place votes. So let's look at round one. I want to count the number of first place votes for each of these candidates. So Alicia has 14 first place votes. Boris has four first place votes. Carmen has 11 first place votes and Dave has eight first place votes. So we are going to eliminate the person with the fewest first place votes, which is Boris. So when I go into round two, I am just going to copy down these columns just with Boris eliminated from each column. And now I'm going to recount my votes. Alicia still has 14 first place votes. Carmen has 11 and Dave has 12. So I'm going to, nobody has 19 votes yet. So I'm going to eliminate the last place person, which is Carmen. And I'm going to continue. Now on to round three. I'm going to eliminate Carmen, so now I'm just left with Alicia and Dave. And now I'm going to recount the votes. Alicia still has 14 first place votes and Dave now has 23. So Dave has more than half of the votes, so he is our 
winner. So, is this a fair method? Well, if a candidate gets the majority of, or gets the majority of the first place votes in the first round, then we're done. So, instant runoff or plurality with elimination is going to satisfy the majority criterion. If somebody has a majority, they win. If you look back at the previous video, we know that Carmen was our Condorcet winner but Dave won runoff or plurality with elimination, so that means that this method can violate the Condorcet criterion. So let's look at another example. We are looking at the mayor of Kingsburg. We have five candidates, candidates A, B, C, D, and E. And Kingsburg chooses their mayor uses in, using instant runoff voting or plurality with an elimination. So we need to figure out who the winner is. So if I add up these numbers along the top, I get that there are 301 total votes Majority is going to be half of this rounded up or half of it plus one, which is going to be 151. So let's start this process. Let's count up all of the votes for these candidates. So candidate A has 93 first place votes. Candidate B has 44. Candidate C has 40, candidate D has 43, and candidate E has 81. So I'm going to eliminate the person with the fewest first place votes, which is candidate C, and I'm going to continue because nobody has 151 votes yet. So I've eliminated C. So I just delete C from each of the columns. Now I can recount my votes. So A now has 103 first place votes, B still has 44, D has 43, and E has 111. Nobody has 151 yet. I'm going to eliminate candidate D because they have the fewest first place votes, and continue. This should have been a D, that's my bad. And let's count our votes again. A has 103 votes, B has 44 votes, and E has 154 votes. Now, even though I have not narrowed it down to just two candidates, I can go ahead and stop here because candidate E has over half the votes. So I can go ahead and declare candidate E the winner. Now, as with every other voting method, there are issues with plurality with elimination or instant runoff voting. So let's say that this is our um, preliminary vote. This is our first round of voting. Let me write out the totals for each of these candidates. A has 11, B has eight, 
C has 10. So B would get eliminated because they have the fewest number of first place votes and candidate C would become our majority winner. If you don't believe me in that statement, you can continue and write out the rest of this. We eliminated B. So A has 11 and C has 18. So C is our winner. Now, let's say some information is leaked and the four voters in the last column decide that they want to keep C from winning for some reason. So they switch their votes as follows. So you can see that we have changed these four votes from A, C, B to C, A, B. Now, if we redo this, oops, forgot to switch back to the pen. Now candidate A gets eliminated in the first round. And now we have made it so that candidate B wins, which would be okay, except C won originally, and those four people actually changed their vote to give C more votes, and C somehow lost. So how does giving someone more votes make them go from winning to losing? That doesn't make sense. So let's add another rule. This is the monotonicity criterion. If candidate X is a winner of an election, and in re-election the only changes in the ballots are changes that favor X, then X should still be the winner. Which again, seems like common sense. If you win, and I give you more votes, you should still win. Now, in real life, plurality with elimination is used uh, for choosing Olympic host sites. And it's used in quite a few municipal elections for um, local politicians. And as we've discussed, Maine and Alaska both use this in uh, larger statewide elections. So that's it for today.